Hi, and welcome back to this series on smart accounts from scratch. In this video, we're going to be going over step two, which is build the paymaster. We'll know if we're successful at the end of the step, if we can pay for the gas with a paymaster contract rather than the smart account. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the repository we were working on in the last video, and we'll go ahead and start from here. So you can see we have our smart accounts repo here. We have our account like we created in the last step. And then we also have all of our scripts for deploying the factory, the entry point and executing our user operation. So what I want to do in this stage is I want to create a paymaster and the paymaster is going to look a little bit similar to the account in the sense that it also validates a user operation. And we are also going to use an interface from the account abstraction repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a paymaster.soul here. And I'm going to copy over some of this stuff from the account. Let's grab this, keep the solidity version. I don't need the entry point here. We already include it in one place. Uh, but the interface I'm going to use is IPayMaster here. And we can go look at that inside of the account abstraction repository. So in here in the IPayMaster, there's going to be two methods that we're going to take a look at. So I'm just going to grab them here with the comments because uh, we're going to need those comments in a second and uh, I am going to bring them over so we can start to implement our paymaster contract. So let me go ahead and say paymaster is I paymaster and uh, in order to make this not an abstract con uh, contract we're going to have to give these functions bodies uh, and once we do that we should see some of the squiggly lines go away. Okay. So a bit of an explanation here. I want to talk about the paymaster a little bit more generally, like what you would do in a production use case. And then we're going to do the simple case, which is us just being able to run a user operation through this paymaster and have it pay for the gas on our behalf, right? So let's talk about, uh, first off, this post-op method here. So this post-op method, I am not going to currently worry about uh, this post operation method is something that you can actually run. Uh, it's something that is going to be run. It's going to be called from the entry point. You could use it if you need to run some calculations after the operation has completed. It's going to pass over this context, which is something that is actually passed over from you by this validate paymaster user op method right here. So you can see that a return value is going to be this context. I am not going to be sending over any context. So for context, I am just going to say new byte zero and just send over nothing in this uh, context here. So we don't need to worry about that for now. Now, the other thing here you'll see is this validation data. For the validation data, I'm gonna do something very similar for what we did with the, um, with the account, which is I'm just gonna return zero. And zero, again, is going to be a special value indicating that this signature is valid and we're willing to sponsor the gas for this user operation. But I do wanna talk a little bit about what would happen in a production use case for a production paymaster. So in order to do that, let's talk about what's coming through in the paymaster user operation. So the user operation is going to have something that is going to be really useful for the paymaster, which is the paymaster and data field. So the paymaster and data field, what it's typically going to include, well, the first 20 bytes has to be the uh, paymaster address. So this is going to be the paymaster address. And we could see that if we go back into the entry point, uh, so let's pull up the entry point. We got to go into node modules, account abstraction, core entry point, and we can look for the paymaster and data. And you can see here that inside of this copy user op to memory, when we create this M user op field um, struct that we see all over the place in the entry point, uh, we could see that what it's doing is it's parsing the paymaster and data. It is pulling out of the paymaster and data the first 20 bytes of the paymaster and data, which it then takes as the paymaster address. So this paymaster address is later used to send over the user operation to call this validate uh, user operation against the paymaster. And we can see that if we look up the iPaymaster interface uh, down here in this validate paymaster prepayment, we could see that we're calling the paymaster address. And this paymaster, again, 
is coming from this MU Zerop Paymaster that we saw parsed out in uh, just a moment ago. And then we have this validate Paymaster user operation, which is the method that we are currently implementing inside of our Paymaster, right? So this is going to call out to our Paymaster. So that first 20 bytes needs to be the address of the Paymaster. So that's always going to be the case. The end data part of the paymaster and data is all really up to you as a paymaster. So you could decide what you want the data to be. Typically what's going to come in the end data part of the paymaster here is going to be uh, two things really. A time period during which the uh, during which the user operation is valid, during which the paymaster is willing to pay for this user operation, for the gas for this user operation, and then a signature, which is uh, some somewhere the paymaster is signing with a private key that it is willing to pay for this user operation, and that signature can be checked on chain inside of the paid paymaster smart contract. So really, if you want to think of the paymaster, you can think of it as two things. You could think of it as a smart contract somewhere, the one that we're implementing, and then also a paymaster server. Somebody has a paymaster server where they are uh, encoding this, or the, they're creating this signature that is saying, yes, I'm willing to pay for this user operation during this time period. And here is the paymaster address where you'll find the paymaster smart contract that will validate this user operation and also have the deposit on the entry point to pay for the gas for the smart account. Okay, that is a mouthful. So this paymaster and data, if we wanna think about a production use case, we can actually go look over at an Alchemy API, which is called uh, request paymaster and data. So if you were using this in a live production use case, you may either be using this endpoint or you may be using it through an SDK. Uh, in which case, what it's doing is it's going to go ahead and see whether or not we can get coverage for user operation. If indeed uh, you can get coverage for this user operation, it is going to return this paymaster and data. And inside of that paymaster and data, we can see what the response is going to be right here. It's going to be a hex string that includes the uh, paymaster address, the signature time range, that time period within which the user operation is valid, and a, a signature saying, yes, I'm willing to pay for this user operation. So while you're creating this user op, you will actually go out and reach out for this paymaster and data so that the paymaster can sponsor this user operation on the smart account's behalf. The other thing that you do need to provide for this API is a policy ID. So this is something that you'll set up inside of the Alchemy dashboard where you are saying, these are the user operations that I am willing to pay for right? So you will create a gas manager policy. Uh, so we can refresh this here and we can see some of the gas manager policies that I've set up within my Alchemy dashboard here. And you could say that for these particular apps, for these particular networks, I am willing to pay for the user operations uh, under a certain criteria here, right? So you can see that in my Arbitrum Sepolia gas manager policy, I have had 16 mined operations where I have been able to sponsor the gas for these user operations. And down here, you can see some of the user operations that I sponsored uh, and um, who I sponsored them for, right? So this would be what you would use. You would take this policy ID over here and you would supply it to this endpoint. Uh, and then it would give you back the paymaster and data that you would use to be able to send this user operation through so that it actually gets sponsored on your behalf. Okay, great. So that is everything that we need to know from a production standpoint of what's happening inside of the paymaster. So really to wrap it all up, you can think of the paymaster as two things, a server somewhere saying, I am willing to pay for this user operation and the smart contract that is going to validate that on chain, right? The smart contract will take that signature and it'll do the validation. And um, then you'll be able to get that sponsored. In this case, to keep it simple, right? We wanna just take a look at all the components. We're trying to keep this as simple as possible. Uh, this is not a production use case. For a production use case, I recommend using the 
Alchemy API tools and the account kit. But for this particular case, we just want to keep things really simple. So I am just going to return zero, indicating that we're willing to pay for every user operation that comes into this paymaster. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to return zero. Uh, it's giving me some squiggly lines because we're not using any of these values here like we should if we were actually uh, implementing this and validating the signature. Uh, now it's getting mad at me for these comments because we're not using any of these parameters here. So let me get rid of those. And uh, last thing is this is now a pure function because we're not reading or writing to state. Uh, great. Okay, so we've implemented our paymaster. Super, super simple paymaster. Very generous paymaster. One that is willing to sponsor the gas for every user operation that comes its way. Great. So now that we've done that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to deploy the paymaster just like we did with the account factory and the entry point. I'm going to take all of these and just deploy them in one script to make this as simple as possible. So let's just take this one over here and then we're going to do the same thing with the paymaster. So I'm going to go ahead and call this paymaster and then we'll do PM and then PM.target pm deployed to and i'm just going to call this script deploy that way we sort of simplify some of this stuff i'm going to get rid of this entry point deployment script and now we just have deploy which is going to deploy all the contracts that we need to deploy before we execute the user operation uh, we have our execute for executing the user operation then we have our test where we could test that we are making that state change and uh, we want to test here that the paymaster is going to be paying for the gas for this user operation. So let's go ahead and deploy all of these. Again, in this uh, video, we restarted our node, our, oh, did I do that yet? Our hard hat node. So let me restart the uh, hard hat node here. So we have a new hard hat node running here, a new blockchain. So I'm gonna have to redeploy all of these things. I'm going to run npx hard hat run script slash deploy.js and this should deploy my account factory my entry point and my um, paymaster here so let's go ahead to our execute function we're going to fill these things in interestingly enough you will notice that uh, these addresses are somewhat similar right um, because you're starting from the same addresses every time you restart a hard hat node you can expect that these are oftentimes the same you may end up with the same addresses here as i do uh, because we're using the same mnemonic for all these different accounts here um, that are uh, programmed here you're going to have the same private keys which is important you know don't use these private keys they're for test purposes only uh, so okay cool uh, we have our account factory, we have our entry point, and then we're going to also have our uh, paymaster here. And the paymaster address is going to be the one that's included here. Sweet. Okay. So now what we want to do is two things with our paymaster. One, uh, the paymaster is going to need to send funds, deposit funds against the entry point, kind of like what our account did in the last stage. And then the other thing is we're going to have to include the paymaster address in that paymaster and data field so that it knows, the entry point knows where the paymaster is to call that validate user wrap on. All right, sweet. So let's do that. So since we restarted a hard hat node, again, we're going to have to go back and uh, initialize our init code so that we can reinitialize the account. So I am going to grab that sender address again. I'm going to put it in the braces here so we know what's being logged out. And then this time I'm going to deposit to not on behalf of the sender, but on behalf of the paymaster here, because we want to be able to have the paymaster have a deposit on our entry point so that it can pay for the gas. And then the only other thing we really need to do here is actually in the paymaster and data, just include the PM address here as well, so that the entry point will call out to the paymaster, call that validate user op, and it's going to return zero indicating, hey, yes, I'm willing to pay for this uh, user operation. I'm willing to pay for the gas for this user operation. And that should really be it. Um, now we're not, you know, depositing anything on the entry point for the sender. The sender doesn't even have any funds uh, in this case, and we can still get the user operation paid for. So let's go ahead and test that that's working properly. I'm gonna run the execute script here. 
and looks like the user operation went through. I'm gonna run test just to make sure. So let's go ahead and do npm run scripts test. And this should be a count of, whoop, could not decode. Um, oops, I did not uh, change the sender address. So the sender address is now this right here. So let's make sure we change that. Thankfully we logged it out and then we can go ahead and run tests and now I should get that count of one. Okay, great. So we've still been able to make the state change. Now a question that I have is, were we able to make the state change using the paymaster to pay for the gas? If we wanna know the answer to that, we should take a look at what the balances of are of the account and the paymaster on the entry point. So just to prove it, right, just to make sure proving to ourselves that uh, everything is working the way we expect it to, let's first log out the uh, account balance, which is the actual ether balance on the account address itself. Let's do that. So we'll say hre.provider or ethers provider dot get balance and we'll get the balance of the account address. There's no ether hiding in the account balance. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is we want to look up the account balance on the entry point. So let's log that out, uh, account balance on EP. And then in order to get this, we are going to need to call out to the entry point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and get the entry point artifact and I'm going to point it at the entry point address, which we have in the execute here. So we can pull that on over and we have the EP address. We're gonna plug that in. This is gonna be called EP. And then in order to look up the deposit on the entry point, we could say entry point dot, I forget the um, function here. So we'll have to go look that up inside of our uh, entry point. So let's go here. The entry point has a contract that it inherits from called the stake manager that manages all the deposits and the stakes on the entry point. So we can go look up what that is. It's balance of. So we can call balance of against an address to see how much is deposited on this entry point. So we'll call balance of to look up the account balance on the entry point here. And we can pass in the account address. Uh, so that is going to be our account balance. And then this is gonna be a promise, so we wanna await it. And then finally, uh, we wanna look up the paymaster balance on the EP to make sure that that is actually something, right? The paymaster should have some funds on the EP, which should slowly be being used as we are having the paymaster pay for the gas for our user operations. So we will also need our paymaster address here, which we can again pull over from our execute function. Here's our PM address. And uh, great, so I think that's everything we needed to do here. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and just run test and see everything's working okay. Uh, it looks like we still have the count of one. Our count balance is zero, so there's nothing actually in the account, the smart account. There's no ether in there, which is what we expect. There's no ether balance on the entry point for the account, but there is a paymaster balance, which should have initially been, uh, let's see, what do we put in there? 100, 100 ether, and now it looks like some of that has been subtracted. Right. So what we expect is if we go ahead and execute this again, and this time we will not have to deposit funds again, and we won't have to init code again because we've already created the smart account, uh, and we want to we want to send a user operation on that same smart account. So we're going to go ahead and just run execute again, maybe a couple times. So let's run execute one to three times. So now the count should be four and we should have drained some of the uh, funds from the paymaster uh, using some of that um, paymaster funds uh, for the gas there. So now you can see that the count is indeed four. Uh, still, we don't have any balance on the account itself, but the paymaster funds are slowly being used. Now we're at 9997. Uh, if we ran this again, we could see that go down, right? So now we should be at like 99996, right? And now our count is five. So we're doing everything that we were expecting to be able to do, which is we created a paymaster contract and that paymaster contract now deposits funds into the entry point. It's paying for the gas for the smart account, which is everything that we wanted to do in this stage. 